Hello my friends, this is Jerry Rosa here at the Rosa String Works Workshop. Got a pair of banjos in today and uh, got a little bit of a unique uh, issue. First one was is a Deering, Deering banjo, an older Deering, and it's a nice one. It, uh, really good sounding banjo, and if you can say a banjo is good sounding, <laughs> you always have to get a banjo joke in there. Anyway, um, it's, uh, I just did a fret job on it. Here it is. I uh, did, a, did a nice fret job on it. I seriously doubt that this thing will have played this well since it was new. Um, the frets were actually really high right in this area here for some reason. Um, and so I leveled them all the way down, took out the deep grooves that were up in the, up in the upper register there. Anyway, I uh, took all that out and uh, you know, got it nice and level, recrowned it, then I oiled the fretboard. So it's up in very good shape now. It should play without any buzzes at all. Now, um, what I'm going to do on the second banjo is a little different. I'm going to show you on this one first. If you can see it, you notice right here, there's a pretty good gap between the, the uh, neck here, this part of the neck, and the flange up here. Well, on the other banjo, there's almost no gap at all. Now, if you know anything about banjo players at all, you know they like to uh, <clears throat> tweak things. <laughs> and that's putting it mildly. <laughs> I've seen guys literally, and I've had it happen in my own band, I've had guys actually switch the head on their banjo 30 minutes before we went on stage. And it's like, are you nuts? <laughs> but anyway, banjo players like to tweak their banjos. And the problem with not having any space in there is it's less tweakable. <laughs> so we're going to make the other banjo match this one in terms of tweakingness. <laughs> I, that's why I call them the five string galvanized mechanical gadget. And that is because uh, every uh, single banjo player in the world out there takes all their tools with them everywhere they go and they are constantly working on their mechanical gadget. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's what we're going to do. I'm poking a little fun at banjo players, of course, as we all do. It's kind of like a rule in bluegrass. You have to do that. So I'm going to lay this banjo aside. Uh, it's pretty much finished. And uh, we're going to pull this other one out, and I'll show you that there is no gap there between the neck and the uh, rim. Actually, there is a gap, but it's very tiny. <clears throat> okay, this one is a Recording King. This is his quote-unquote knock-around banjo, if you will. And you can see on this one that that little gap here is pretty small. It's only about, oh, I'm just guessing, uh, 16th, between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch. The other one I measured out at 375 thousandths, which is 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to do my best to make this one match that one exactly, and therefore he should be happy. But now that requires a lot of disassembly. I'm going to have to get out my whole tool kit, take this thing completely apart, take the neck off of it, and go to work. Okay, it's been just a few minutes. I got the uh, five string galvanized mechanical gadget apart. and. Uh, such are the well-made plans of mice and men. I will probably have to punt on this because uh, it's not going to go down three-eighths of an inch. If I do that, I'll be below this uh, top screw. So what I think I'll do is I'll just cut it down to just approximately even with the top of the screw there. Um, and that will give him uh, an additional oh, three-sixteenths of an inch. And that ought to be enough. Uh, that's about all you're going to get out of this one. I mean, I could go down below the, the uh, bolt there, but I don't feel comfortable doing that. It's kind of kind of weakens it a little bit. So I think I'm just going to cut it down and make it approximately even with the, with the top of this bolt. And you can see what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to go approximately even across here. And I don't really want to go below the belt. I'd have to actually go below it to make it match the other one. And I don't think I want to do that. So this will give him more room though and uh, make it a little bit more tweakable, if you will. So here we go. Okay, I've set my calipers to 3 16 of an inch, which is 0.1875. And uh, 
I'm now scoring it. I just scored across the back here so that I have a, a visual line now across the back so that I know where I want to cut to. And now I'm going to score across the, the, the finished side of each, uh, each side of the neck. It's just a little tiny score line, but I just want to make sure I have it there so I can cut the finish and I won't peel the finish off. So I've got a little tiny score line there. I don't know if that's going to show up at all or not but it's right there. Get my cheater glasses on here so I can see what I'm doing. And basically, I'm going to just extend the line of the neck down to that score line on the end here with my new bladed uh, X-Acto knife so I can cut the finish. So hopefully it won't chip the finish out that way and I'll score it across here with the knife to cut the finish on the score line so cutting is pretty deep so that I know I'm all the way down through the finish and that way I won't get any tear out when I get to the edge there do the same thing on this side cut the score line and extend the line of the neck down that'll make it look good and work good now oh, there's a bunch of ways I could do this I'm kind of a hand kind of guy so I'm going to take and just score the top of this right across here I'm going to zoom in so you can see it a little bit better So basically I'm just scoring across the top right here and since we're dealing with end grain as I cut across that end grain that stuff's going to be very easy to chip out or I believe it will be I could always be fooled but I'm just gonna it's just an easy way to do it that'll be very accurate I'm just following that score line down and I'm going deeper and deeper each cut with the exacto knife now I can take a very small chisel and just lift it right out of there, I believe. It just chips right out of there because it's going across that end grain. And as you can see, and I don't know if the camera will focus very well this way, you can see where the old line was there where it used to be and now it's down just above the bolt. So we took off right about 3 16 of an inch. And uh, that's about as much as I feel comfortable taking off on this one and that will definitely give uh, plenty of adjustment in my opinion. I don't feel like you need all the rest of that anyway because you know who's going to move it three eighths of an inch so, you know, most of the time when you're moving it you're just moving it a sixteenth of an inch or in that range so this will give you more than enough room I would think to move it and we should be good I do see a little bit of a little bit of a unevenness right here where I'm on my score line so I'll just rake this across there smooth that out and that'll sure make that easy or it's nice and smooth really can't hardly see the transition line that way okay well that's about it now I'll just put her back together okay we got her all back together and uh, I did a light uh, fret uh, dressing on these uh, on this banjo in other words I leveled all the frets now if you remember on the deering the the frets were high in this general area they were really high in that area on this one they were high in this area 
So uh, that would make it pretty tough to play too because you're up in this area all the time. So there's going to be a lot of buzzing going on there. So that's all leveled now. It's all recrowned, and uh, we're ready to string her back up. When we get her strung up, I'll show you the finished product. Okay, we're just about finished, but uh, unfortunately, it looks to me, at least in my opinion, that the action is a little bit too high on the strings right in here. So, uh, prematurely I put the back on it. Shouldn't have put the back on it yet. And uh, so I'm going to take the uh, resonator back off of here. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter where I put it. Uh, as I told you, banjo players uh, like to do their own thing, so they'll he'll probably change it anyway. So uh, I just want to get it in the ballpark, though, because it doesn't look very good where it's at. And uh, with it laying on that bridge there, it's probably going to fall down on that bridge. So I need to tighten this uh, top rod to pull the neck up a little bit. Um, so. sure exactly how I'm going to go about that yet. We'll do it this way. We'll tighten this end right here. That'll pull this whole thing through. I've got that pretty much snug up there. And uh, what I'm going to do is leave this nut a little bit loose so that when it tightens up or it gets closer to tightening up, I'll know I'm pretty close. put something in here the whole thing's turning there we go there we go and I can see that drawn up there now that draw it up so uh, I'm gonna call that good enough I don't know how much that affected it I had affected it pretty good so I'm gonna go with that that looks pretty good to me um, you know I'm just going by eye. There's no particular measurements that I take on on setup, uh, even on you know guitars or mandolins or anything. I pretty much do it all by eye, experience and feel, and uh, that just looks better. It definitely looks better than where it was. If it's not good enough, he knows how to tweak it and he'll tweak it. Okay, now we'll check the intonation. Open, you get it as close as you can on, the, on that D string. And then we hit the 12th fret, which is about right there. Just a hair sharp. So I'm gonna pull this one back a little bit. Try it again. We'll do it with the uh, D string on the top side. And it's still a hair sharp, so I'm going to pull it, keep the other side where it was at, and pull the heavy side back just a hair. It's, uh, seems to be set up real good. The action's just about the right height, I think. Uh, of course, every banjo player in the world has a different opinion on that. But uh, that looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to leave it right there. Uh, everything's tightened back up. Uh, the frets are level now. The uh, neck has some adjustment in it. And uh, I would think he ought to be pretty happy with that. If he's not, um, well, then I'll do it again. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. Y'all take care.